The University of Rochester recently published a study conducted by Professor Miriam Zuckerman. The study concluded that people who are atheists tend to have higher intelligence quotients than people of faith. The danger of the study, of course, from a person of faith's perspective, is that atheists are going to use this as a way of saying, see, science shows that belief in God is unintelligible, that smart people don't tend to believe in that sort of thing. Now, that's not, first of all, what the study shows, but even furthermore, there's an appeal being made here to science as the highest form of authority, which, of course, a person of faith is going to reject outright, because God is the highest source of authority, not science. Beyond that, though, I think this study does have implications for people of faith that we need to take quite seriously. Namely, is our faith intelligible? In other words, so often I find people of faith believe, but they don't believe for an intelligible reason. Or they act just kind of like lemmings, saying, well, you know, the Pope said this, so I'm going to do it. That's dangerous for the faith. Because our faith isn't one where we simply say, well, the Pope said something, and therefore we have to do it. I mean, certainly when the Pope says something, we have to do it. But the Pope doesn't just make up things. He doesn't wake up one morning and say, gee, I've decided we can't ordain women, and so therefore we won't. And everybody has to say, okay, well, we won't do it. Instead, what he does is he shows there's an intelligible argument for that position. And he shows how that position is in keeping with the 2,000-year tradition of the Catholic faith, and how it's in keeping with what has been revealed to us by Christ. You know, but so often our society doesn't show us that. Our society just breaks everything down into sound bites, and it tries to make the Catholic faith look unintelligible. It tries to make us look like a bunch of superstitious people who view people like St. Anthony as a saint who's our cosmic butler, just sitting around in heaven waiting for us to tell him what we've lost so that we can find it. We don't help ourselves when we treat him that way. Similarly, when we bury statues of St. Joseph in order to sell our homes, yes, we're acting out of superstition. That's not an intelligible aspect of our faith, and it's not Catholicism at least not authentically, authentically so. Instead, what we need to do is show what Catholicism truly is. Namely, it is an encounter with Jesus Christ, and it, based on that encounter, it's given us a way of life. And that way of life is intelligible based on that encounter that we've had with Christ. When we look at the Catechism of the Catholic Church, we don't find silly superstitions. We don't find teachings that are just say, well, Pope said this, so you got to do it. Now, what we find is an articulation of our faith showing how it is intelligible based on that encounter with Jesus Christ. It is doing exactly what St. Paul said to do when it says we should be prepared to give an account of our faith. St. Paul told this. They said, be prepared to always give an account of your faith. Implicit in this is we should be able to give an intelligible account of our faith, not simply say, well, somebody else said this, and so I'm going to do it. And so it's important for us as Catholics to continue to educate ourselves in the faith and not simply to settle for a watered-down faith. This is the reason I started the Working to Beat Hell ministry, as a matter of fact, is because so often I find Catholics settling for watered-down versions of the faith, and I find people arguing against these watered-down versions of the faith. Well, of course you can argue against those, because they're not authentic Catholicism. Authentic Catholicism is very intelligible. I mean, think about the fact that Catholicism founded the modern university system, so it has no problem with academia, it has no problem with intelligible thought. And in fact, it insists that our belief should be intelligible. John Paul II wrote about this in Fidatze Ratio when he said that faith and reason aren't opposed to each other. But go back and look at some of the great scholars that we've had from Aquinas to Bonaventure, Balthazar, John Paul II, Benedict XVI. I mean, these are giants in their fields outright. So it's important for us to understand that this isn't just a system of thought for people who can't cope with the world or who don't know better or are too naive to understand that there really is no God. No, it is based on an encounter with Jesus Christ. And then it's an intelligible system of thought from there. And it's important for us to educate ourselves in that. What disturbs, me, what disturbs me a lot is the fact that a lot of Catholics stop educating themselves after eighth grade when they've received confirmation or whenever they receive confirmation. The danger, of course, is that an eighth grade understanding of the world is not sufficient for an adult. You know, we would never allow an eighth grade understanding of mathematics or science to be all that we have. Instead, we say, no, you've got to go to high school. And in particular, if you want to work in these fields, you have to go to college and perhaps graduate school to deepen your understanding of these things. But we never do this with faith. I think it's important that we do. I think it's important that we say, hey, as an adult, I can't settle for an eighth grade understanding of my faith. I have to have an adult understanding of my faith. I can't settle for these naive understandings that we give to people when they're three, four, five, six years old, or second, third, fourth, and fifth grade. I need to have an adult understanding of these things and understand that they're not just intelligible for a second grader, but they're intelligible for an adult as well.
See, I think it's important that we have an intelligible faith so that when we go and dialogue with people of different faiths or of no faith at all, we can at least show that we're not superstitious. We're not believing in something just because somebody else told us we have to believe in it, but we're believing in it based on a real intelligible reason. Our faith is, in fact, intelligible. And I think that's a message that we need to communicate to the secular world because it's not a message that's portrayed in the secular media. And the only way we can portray that is if we ourselves understand our faith and don't allow people to sit here and say, well, the Catholic Church just believes in things because they want to self-promote, so we believe that you shouldn't use contraception because we need more Catholics. No, no, that's not it at all. We need to say, that's a silly, that's a naive notion. Instead, let me show you the intelligible reason. The intelligible reason is because we have an understanding of the human person. We have an understanding of marriage. We have an understanding of the sexual act in marriage. And we say that that marital act is an act of total self-giving, total self-love. And that means we can't withhold anything, including our fertility, from one another. And that's our argument against contraception. It has nothing to do with we need more Catholics. In fact, if that were the case, it would seem we're failing at great lengths. Instead, what we're doing is we're saying we have an intelligible reason for what we believe. And I think it's important as Catholics that we educate ourselves so that we can articulate to the world the intelligible reason for our faith, the intelligible reason for our belief.